Hello everybody and welcome to day 14 of the wisdom challenge. Yes, this video is late because yesterday I spent most of the day asleep. I don't know if you guys ever have one of those days where like you're just so exhausted and everything just hits you in one go. I swear I barely even remember what happened yesterday. But anyways, we're continuing. I'm going to be doing yesterday's video and today's video today. So please look forward to these. I'm sure they're going to be amazing because we are reading, of course, the Bible. We're doing a proverb a day because that's how we're going to keep ourselves wise from 2023 and beyond. So let's get straight into this, guys. If you're already this far in, you already know what this is all about. So I don't need to give you guys all the mumbo jumbo. But if you don't, check out the first couple of videos where I give more of a breakdown of what this challenge is all about. So let's invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you into our time of reading. Please give us the wisdom behind the knowledge of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Let's get started on day 14, everybody. And if you enjoy the video, you guys already know what I'm going to say next. Don't forget to hit that subscribe if you're feeling the vibe and you want to join the tribe. OK, let's do it. OK, so here we go. Uh, verse Proverbs 14 from verse one. And we're reading in the Passion Translation. Every wise woman encourages and builds up her family, but a foolish woman over time will tear it down by her own actions. This, this is true. This is true. I actually think of women in as far as like the home are like builders, you know, we build a home. You know what I'm saying? We build our people up. We are builders. We're supposed to be builders as women. And we're either going to be builders or bulldozers. And unfortunately, yes, a foolish woman over time will tear it down by her own actions. Lovers of the truth follow the right path because of their wonderment and worship of God. But the devious display their disdain for him. Right. So this is the other thing I've said to you guys before. Like we've been very clearly seeing two clear categories that we all exist in. Right. We're either wise or we're a fool. And there's two distinct differences there. And one of the distinct differences I've noticed is that this concept of uh, of awe, having awe and kind of respect for God being attached to wisdom and kind of having, you know, disdain or not really respecting him and whatnot being foolish. Right. And I've talked more about that in other videos um, in this series, so I'm not going to go over that point again in this one. Uh, verse three, the words of a proud fool will always come back to haunt him, but the words of the wise will become a shield of protection around them. The only clean stable is an empty stable. So if you want the work of an ox, if so if you want the work of an ox and to enjoy an abundant harvest, you'll have a mess or two to clean up. I really like this, actually. I like where this is going, because I think in life there's this kind of, it's like the whole concept of, Basically, if you want to if you want to have an abundant harvest, you need to be prepared to get your hands dirty. Right. Do the work. Right. And you may need to clean up after yourself, but it will be worth it. It kind of reminds me about cooking because I love to cook and I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm pretty good at cooking, to be honest with you. And um, but if you come into the kitchen sometimes when I'm cooking at a certain point, there's always like this one short fraction of time where it looks like a bomb went off in the kitchen because I've got like two pots plus a plan on like all on. I've got chopped up vegetables and meats and stuff over here. I've got dishes from where I was measuring this and doing that. And it looks crazy. But at the end, when the food is done and it is served, and by that point, I've also cleared the kitchen. I've tidied everything. I've washed the dishes. And all there is is a clean kitchen and beautifully cooked, great smelling food. And it is like one of the most peaceful, beautiful moments of cooking. Now I can serve the people. You know what I'm saying? It kind of reminds me of this, right? Um, an honest witness, with verse five, an honest witness will never lie, but a deceitful witness lies with every breath. I've said this many times to you guys that I think lying in and of itself is just always a bad idea. If somebody lies, they will always lie. Like this is where, again, the two, the two categories, the two camps you're either in, you know, the, you're either wise or you're a fool, right? You're either a truth teller or you're a liar and that's why i said guys lying can become a lifestyle a lot of people lie by lifestyle and that's why if i know somebody is prepared to lie a lot anyway i don't trust anything they say because at any point lying is an option that they are prepared to take whereas people who are truthful well, lying is a big deal to them right so they would uh, even in a situation where they might might be in their best interest or it might be easier for them to lie they might still they probably still won't do it because it's a part of their who they are their character their lifestyle that they live right um where are we now verse six the intellect the intellectually arrogant seek for wisdom but they never seem to discover what they claim they're looking for for revelation knowledge flows to the one who hungers for understanding 
The words of the wise are like weapons of knowledge. If you need wise counsel, stay away from the fool. For the wisdom of the wise will keep life on the right track, while the fool only deceives himself and refuses to face reality. <sighs> the fools mock the need for repentance, while the favour of God rests upon all his lovers. Um, I what I want to just kind of unpack with this again, right, is just this concept of like, you know, I said, we've said in the last couple of videos now, this running thing of wisdom being attached to hum humility and um, foolishness being attached to kind of pride, right? And so, and then also wisdom being attached to humility and then also teachability and pride, I'm sorry, foolishness being attached to pride and then stubbornness, right? And and that's why I think it's important for where why God says, you know, that the what um what, what is it that it just said? Um for the wisdom of the wise will keep life on the right track, while the fool only deceives himself and refuses to face reality. Fools mock the need for repentance. So we do all need to repent, guys, and repenting is just turning away. That's what it means. It means turning at 180 degrees away from something, and we all need to repent in different times of life. I think so many of these words are very overly spiritualized by religion when a lot of it is just very clear practical things that God is saying as in for example if you live a diet where all you eat every day is McDonald's for breakfast KFC for lunch and Burger King for dinner yeah maybe you want to repent from that lifestyle turn away from that lifestyle and change the way you're doing things and that's again being teachable you being prepared to repent you being prepared to apologize is evidence of your teachability does that make sense and I, I kind of talked about this previously in another video that I did at, at the request of one of you guys where I was saying um about why modern women are on in it um the inability of a lot of modern women today to actually apologize and I was saying that a lot of that comes from pride because for in order to take accountability you have to have the humility to do so and that's why fools will mock the need for repentance because they kind of say like what's there to repent what do they need to learn they're they're sitting there they're sitting there in their pride thinking that everything's they've got everything together and that in and of itself is the foolish thought right verse 10 don't expect anyone else don't expect anyone else to fully understand both the bitterness and the joys of all you experience in your life oh this is a good one the household of the wicked is soon torn apart while the family of the righteous flourishes you can rationalize it all you want and justify the path of error you have chosen but you'll find out in the end that you took the road to destruction Oof. this is one of those things that i think is so incredibly prevalent in society today like this kind of like um justification of doing the wrong thing and it's something that we and this is why i like that it says don't expect any anyone else to fully understand both the bitterness and joys of all you you experience in your life don't go around expecting everybody to, get, you know, do you know what I mean? Be there helping you wipe away your tears and being a shoulder to cry on for everything you've been through, right? Because first of all, we all live such different experiences, guys. That's why I find it really weird how we're, there's all of this, like a lot of the social action stuff. Guys, we're not all going to understand each other's perspective, right? And the truth is a lot of men out there, so let's say, let's say when it comes to feminism and stuff like that, right? A lot of men out there just genuinely don't, and they're not women, so we can't be expecting that somehow we're going to keep screaming louder and louder off the rooftops that all of a sudden they're going to understand everything that we go through. Just in the same way, it's the same in the reverse. We can't expect to also understand everything they go through. What's actually healthier is for us all to have just a human level of respect for each other right and understand that we've all, all gone through different things but when we're always asking for you know all this and I use this example because it's a good one and also because of course I'm a woman so I'm looking at it from you know um from the perspective of being a woman right we can't expect everybody to understand everything and we certainly cannot use it as an excuse like use the fact that people don't understand or the, don't understand what we've been through or the fact that we've been through this as a result of that we can't use those things as an excuse because this is exactly what we're seeing right now actually on this exact subject right you can rationalize it all you want and justify the path of error you have chosen but you'll find out in the end that you took the road to destruction it's so true that's what a lot of ladies today right we are just justifying a lot of ridiculous behavior under the guise of oh if anybody tells me anything else you're in the wrong because i am the one who I'm a woman, you don't know what it's like to be a woman, you don't know what it's like to have grown up with the misogyny, you don't know what it's like to have grown up in a patriarchal society, blah, 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 right? But that's not a justification, that justification doesn't rationalise what you're doing. And you are going to yourself, and we talk about this so much on this channel recently, that you yourself are going to be the one who realises that this, you put yourself on this pathway. And I keep saying, that, I keep seeing this theme in Proverbs of God mentioning like, 
don't come looking to blame anybody else when you treat when you make foolish decisions right don't come blaming anybody else when you've decided you want to sleep with 200 people and nobody wants to marry you don't come blaming anybody else you wanted to rationalize it as your your body your choice you wanted to rationalize as well this is me expressing myself or being naked online is expressing myself or having an only fans or whatever it is that you're doing don't blame anybody else when the distraction that you set up comes for you and that's exactly how foolishness works guys because it's a deception you believe in something that's not real and eventually you have to deal with the consequences and i just pray to the lord that he would save me from any severe consequences of actions of things i'm doing because mate i do not want to be where a lot of people are going to find themselves right verse 13 superficial laughter can hide a heavy heart but when laughter ends the pain resurfaces how many comedians take their lives right uh those who turn from the truth get what they deserve but a good person receives a sweet reward a gullible person will believe anything but a sensible person will confirm the facts oh this is another one we need in society today because a lot of people are just running off um in fact, I can think of the perfect example for this one, right? Because it's something that I was just, I was just watching a video with somebody and um, we were watching this video about Twitter and it was about Twitter and how in January, in April, on April the 3rd, 2019, I have a screenshot, by the way, guys, I took a picture of this tweet. T Twitter said age is just a number, right? That's what a tweet was saying. And basically this whole video is talking about how people are trying to justify being attracted to minors, right? that's that's the new phrase that's being used right minor attracted persons and there's this whole community about this anyway i was saying to this person who who i was who i was with i was like do you know that do you know that um uh i was talking about how you know donald trump got taken off of twitter for inciting violence even though he was actually doing the exact opposite but so many people believed that he was inciting violence why because they just heard it they heard the news say it they heard other people say it and they went with it right so in reality a platform that says oh we're censoring things because we want to look like we're high and mighty and we want to look like we protect the people right is shutting down the sitting president of the united states which if you ask me is extremely disrespectful i've talked about this in another whole video but at the same time you're having adults justifying um attraction and even acting on attraction with children right and you have twitter themselves their twitter page co-signing saying age is just the number this is what i mean when i say that it's important to look the facts up for yourself guys do you know how many things that i look into i go and look i always go and look at it myself and then i make my decision it's like this whole george floyd thing right now i would i don't know if many people i don't know how many people know this but do you know there's like a one hour long video on youtube that shows exactly what happened from the moment he was first arrested until the end from like and it gives you like all the four police officers that were there their like body cam footage and let me tell you if you go and watch that you'll find it very interesting to discover what really went down and i'm not to say that i still believe that one of the officers was um out of line i will say that right but there's a lot more to the story so yeah a sensible person will confirm the facts verse 16 a wise person is careful on all things and turns quickly from evil while the impetuous form moves ahead with overconfidence oh yes overconfidence pride all of this guys is a sense of foolishness right uh verse 17 an impulsive person has a short fuse and can ruin everything but the wise show self-control do you know what guys so self-control is one of the fruits of the spirit right and fruits of the spirit is in fruits of the holy spirit evidence in your life if this is what i always say to people especially if you're not a christian yourself right or a bible believing follower of christ like i am because i call myself that because a christian is a very loaded term and there's a lot of christians who don't know god at all but anyway um what was i going to say yeah um there's this there's this p passage in the bible and i need to remember to actually like look it up and i think it's in like corinthians and it's like um the fruits of the spirit aka this is what you look for in somebody as an evidence that the Holy Spirit, that God dwells in their life, that they are, have a relationship with God. And I actually always like to use this particular scripture because I think it, it kind of, because um, it, it, it lets you, it helps us. I believe it's like God's giving us a litmus test, right? To kind of work out who, which people are his and which people are not his. Oh, hello. Is it here? Um, yeah, to, to let us know who, which people are his and which people are not his, right? because a lot of people go around um claiming to be you know children of god and this that and the other but when you actually hear what god tells you is what his his distinction is of his people it is very different and i think it's super important to actually know so that when people are trying to say that they're the lords he can be like well i told you that these are ah i found it i found it i'm so happy okay so it's in galatians galatians 5 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness 
self-control against such things there is no law let's do that again love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control now there's a reason why these things are so important and key now that's how you know guys if somebody is exhibiting the love that has the holy spirit dwelling inside of them okay self-control self-control is so important because a lot of times the enemy will catch us off guard in the area of lack of self-control if you're an angry person and you have not got a handle on your anger it is so easy to completely shift the trajectory of your whole entire life just by making you angry right like i've seen this happen with some people where i'm like especially sometimes you can have this with guys who are like super like i don't know Fool, foolish if you ask me right where anybody there's a lot of this especially in like ganghood cultures right like anybody that looks at them they're gonna start like trying to fight them they're gonna start doing something right this is something this is something that people don't realize i'm trying to remember there's this video that's coming to mind right now that's crazy right well basically what happened was um there was a situation where oh what was it i can't remember it was what exactly what it was but basically there was a guy in a car and there was a there was a guy on a bicycle right and they're all they're both in the road so the guy in the car i don't know what the book the guy in the car did but he did something to the guy in the bicycle obviously thinking well this guy's on a bicycle he's not going to be able to do anything and i see a lot of this people in that there's a lot of people in the world who feel who feel powerful and power and and who feel untouchable because they're inside a vehicle right I've seen this happen and I've seen people be humbled very quickly by somebody else who doesn't care. And that's actually exactly what happened in this scenario. So this guy, I think there was some stuff going on. There was like traffic or whatever. And then this car, the guy in the car did something to annoy the guy um, on the bicycle. Little did he know that this guy on the bicycle had a knife. And he got out of the, off the bicycle, got out of his car and he had this big long knife, right? And he started like hammering this guy's um window to try and break in. And it was like, if this guy could, broke in, this the, the driver guy was going to be dead, right? And this guy would look like he wasn't going to hold back. Now, both of them on both parts are exhibiting foolish behavior here. He thought that just because he was inside a car and his lack of self-control, he was just going to do whatever he was going to do. And this guy wasn't going to do anything. And also the other guy now is potentially going to do something, a serious crime that a lot of people could see because I, this video exists on the Internet because somebody must have recorded it in the dash cam or because he must have flipped him off or something. In that one moment, the lack of self-control of those two parties was about to, could potentially change the trajectory of their life forever. The driver nearly didn't live. He nearly didn't live. Do you see what I'm saying? And the guy who was in trouble, he might still have got arrested. He might even be in prison right now, sitting um, charged for attempted murder. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's like that one moment, that little thing. I always say to people, you know, it's like with crossing the road and stuff, right? It's, you've got to learn, we've got to learn as people that, things a lot of t situations that happen a lot of t turning points in people's lives it wasn't a, it wasn't a season it was a moment it was in an exact moment when they decided to do something right or not do something that changed their life forever right it's the same thing with going and sleeping around guys it's the same thing this is why i believe if you don't want to be tempted to just be out here hoeing about then don't put put things around yourself that are going to help to keep you control maybe don't go out half naked um inebriated three times in e three times every weekend do you see what I'm saying? If you're not trying to get pregnant. You know what I mean? So sometimes self-control is so important because that is when people get you. That is when even not even just, and you don't have to think about it even as a kingdom of darkness. You just think about it as somebody who wants to ruin your life will provoke you. This is one of the things that narcissistic people do, as I've discovered, right? Um, for all this research I've been doing into that for like literally months now. In fact, <laughs> yeah, literally months and months now right is they will find the trigger points of the person the person who's their victim because it's a way for them to get that person worked up does that make sense have you guys ever known somebody that's like that who will purposely try and work you up to the point where you start to realize why is it that you always i've noticed there's people like that why is it you always try and do this thing that you know makes me upset or you know i don't like because they're doing it on purpose guys and that's why we have to have self-control anyway verse 18 the naive demonstrate a lack of wisdom but the lovers of wisdom are crowned with revelation knowledge evil ones will pay tribute to good people and eventually come to be servants of the go of the godly <laughs> it's true the poor are disliked even by their neighbors but everyone wants to get close to the wealthy it's a sin to despise one who is less fortunate than you but when you are kind but when you are kind to the poor you will prosper and be blessed 
Haven't you noticed how evil schemers always wander astray, but kindness and truth come to those who make plans to be pure in all their ways? If you work hard at what you do, great ab abundance will come to you. But merely talking about getting rich while living to only pursue your pleasures brings you face to face with poverty. Whew. The true net worth, and this is actually a key thing because I talked about this, guys, in my... Um, Ten, I don't know what it was called, it was like 10 tips to win in, like in 2023 and beyond or something, it was something like that, right, 10 steps to whatever, I don't know what it was, but it was a 10, 10 video to something and I was saying in that video that, the, I was saying about this basically, but merely talking about getting rich or living to only pursue your pleasures brings you face to face with poverty you got to live for something bigger than yourself because if all you're living for is i want to own a lamborghini one day i want to buy a mansion one day i want to be able to have as many women as i want one day that isn't a sustainable thing to be focused on that's going to keep you in check having so you have to you have to dream about something that is deeper and more substantial than just the lifestyle that you want to live because you will ultimately find your face in poverty and you see that happening all the time. Uh, verse 24, the true net worth of the wise is the wealth that wisdom imparts. That is it. But the way of life for the fool is his foolishness. Speak the truth and you'll save souls. But in spreading in the spreading of lies, treachery thrives. Ooh, okay. Confidence and strength flood the hearts of the lovers of God who live in awe of him and their devotion provides their children with a place of shelter and security. To worship God in wonder and awe opens a fountain of life within you empowering you to escape um death's domain a king glories in the number of his loyal followers but a dwindling population spells ruin for any leader when your heart overflows with understanding you'll be very slow to get angry but if you have a quick a temper your impatience will be quickly seen by all i often find that a lack of self-control especially in the area of anger is usually is usually partnered up with a lack of general understanding of humans as as kind of vague as that sound is in a lot of people get upset about stuff because of how it makes them feel and how they feel attacked and they're they're not they don't have like the emotional intelligence enough to really understand that a lot of things a lot of times people get offended a lot of times people get triggered the person doing the offending and the triggering did not intend it and a lot of conversations especially as adults right a lot of things we could actually all situations that people have gotten like so angry and lost their temper a simple few questions could have changed the scenario completely like i've said this before and it's one of the things that i use to to gauge relationships with people right in general is how their ability like what happens when they're they're annoyed because the thing with me about when i get annoyed is i don't really seem annoyed i don't actually usually get annoyed because what happens is if something happens that i don't like i ask questions i'll be like you just said um, this, 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 this. Was your intention to do this, this, this? Then they'll be like, no, that's not what I meant. Okay, what did you mean? Oh, what I meant was that, this, that, that, this. Do you, can I tell you guys how many times just asking a few questions before getting angry has led to me never getting angry in the first place? I very rarely get angry these days. And the only times that I do is when I'm talking to somebody who does not, is not incapable of doing what I just said. That's the only time they end up getting angry because then I start to get actually frustrated. They just start screaming and shouting. And there's a lot of adults today who don't know any other option other than screaming and shouting. There's a lot of other adults today who don't know any other action than just curling up and internalizing all of their feelings and then having kind of an internalized anger. What it would be nice and be wise for us all to do is to just pause. Remember, we're human beings, we're all individuals and we all have different perspectives and ask a few questions. You know what I mean? And I've seen that works wonders. So that's a tip, guys, especially in relationships. Let me tell you, if you're dealing, if you're in a relationship or a marriage or whatever, it's not supposed to be, it's not going to be easy because you're two different people. So just asking questions helps a lot because you might think that person was trying to be rude. They might not have thought and they would, they don't, not, might not have seen it that way. Right. And maybe all you need to do is, oh, you know what? I, I appreciate that you didn't mean it, but it just it did come across a little bit rudely, to be honest with you. And then they might say, oh, that wasn't my intention. They might say, oh, I'll try um, not to do that again. You know what I mean? And then it's just a conversation. It's not even an argument. And that can happen a lot in life, guys. A lot of times in life, you can just have a conversation instead of getting angry. Um, verse 30, a tender, tranquil heart will make you healthy but jealousy can make you sick. Insult your creator, will you? That's exactly what you do every time you oppress the powerless. Showing kindness to the poor is equal to honoring your maker. 
again i think this is so much more not i think a lot of people today guys when they want to do good things for people they want to be seen as a good person and that's not why god is saying this at all i've just it's just hit me the revelation of this right now the reason why god puts so much of a focus on how we treat you treat the poor etc etc is not so you get to feel like a goody two-shoes not so you feel like you got to do your good deed for the day it's a it's a show of your heart as a person it's a show of who you are as a person. It was a show of how you value human life. It's a show of your revelation about what God see, how God sees the human person, right? So showing that's why I'm saying showing kindness um, to the poor is equal to honoring your maker. You're honoring God's creation, right? And you're understanding that just because this person doesn't have something to gain gain from you, like a lot of people will 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 give all the compliments. I can tell you guys this myself because this is when I this is when I, I really had got given a very rude awakening about what life is really about. Because I went through a long season of just like excelling loads at a lot of things. And I've always been that type of person who just is, is really good at a lot of things and just excels in life at a lot of things, right? Then I decided that I was going to put that all on pause because I was like, you know what? I have some things I want to deal with emotionally. And honestly, I kind of got a bit bored of the superficiality of it all. I got bored of how superficial it is. Like, oh, when you have accolades and you get invited to this event and you get that, this, that, and you get this award and people, everybody's kissing your butt, right? And then I was like, okay, let's see what happens. I'm going to take some time out for myself and to focus on myself and well, not even for myself, focus on the Lord really, but to let him do work within me as well, right? And then that's when I got to the the worst season of my life, guys, which was when I was about, I would say 21 to 24, I'm 25, by the way, right now. And it was telling because everybody who was there for me all the time, so happy with everything I was doing. Now that I was in need, now that I was, I was, I was, I wasn't living the life so that I was living before everybody's true colors finally shown and it kind of taught me it reminds me of what jesus said in the bible because i was reading the bible so much and just really relating to jesus in this particular season right and i was thinking this all makes sense like where he would tell the pharisee he would tell his people like a lot of these pharisees and sadducees the chief priests right they go around boastfully inviting each other to dinners and stuff but only because they know they're going to be invited um they're, 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 that they're basically going to get their money back because one person's going to invite everybody for dinner then the another person in the group's going to invite everybody for dinner so they're all really doing it just because they're all going to gain it back whatever they're doing but the real show of somebody's heart is like where they're at when you're at your worst you know what i'm saying and you see a lot of that and i think that is something that i have definitely had to learn the hard way and that's actually why i have such a close relationship with the lord because i was going through the most difficult part time of my life and god was like I felt his love more strongly than I ever had before and that says a lot uh yeah little tidbit in there so yeah guys people it's about people's show of their heart when it talks about looking after the poor what what do you value do you see the world do you see human life the way God sees human life right not you now look like oh that's why even the bible says you, you should not let your left hand know what your right hand's doing right it's not about it's not about the the what it's about the why you know what I'm saying and I think even for me growing up it just gets so irritated when you see these, these like pastors going to like Africa somewhere and they would show up in these little townships and they would have like a bag of a huge bag of rice and then like uh, um, a a check and they'd be standing there taking pictures. I'm like, do you think if somebody in their lowest point wants to be there seen, being seen to be a charity case, if you really wanted to look after them and protect their humanity, do it in private. Like let, live, let, let them let them let them share that one day if they want to. I mean, you broadcasting this all over the place that's about you my friend because i don't know about you guys but when i'm going through hard times and hard seasons i don't want to be plastered all over the, the world i want to be kept if anybody can if anybody would be supporting me i'd rather even it be kept quiet you know and, and again not to say that we should be prideful in our in our poverty i'm not saying that i'm saying you know if it's, if we're talking about how, how we actually care about humans let's actually treat them as humans who are deserving you know what i mean Verse 32, we're nearly done. The wicked are crushed by every calamity, but the righteous find a strong hope in the time of death. Wisdom soothes the heart of the one with living understanding, but the heart of the fool just stockpiles stupidity. A nation is exalted by the righteous of its people, but sin heaps disgrace upon the land. This is so true, guys. Let's think about, let's think about Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew andrew right because let's let's go prince diana princess diana and prince andrew right princess diana was known in the royal family to be the one who the public loved she seemed so natural she seemed so genuinely caring 
and I think it very highly informed people's overall perspective of the UK and I truly personally believe that I would be very interested to see how if people would have even cared as much about the royal family without the season of Princess Diana you know what I'm saying versus Prince Andrew how did Prince Andrew make all of the UK look because that's how people look at these types of things they look at the, the the leadership they look at what types of people come out from there and they make a judgment on the land right um and so it does a nation is exalted by the righteousness of its people but sin heaps disgrace upon the land it was disgraceful right verse 35 a wise and a faithful servant receives promotion from the king but the one who acts disgracefully gets to taste the anger of the king the one who acts disgracefully you know what guys this has been an interesting one like this has been interesting one. We went through so many different ebbs and flows and 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 hot topics today that I don't even know what I'm going to title this video. But once again, we're we're clearly seeing, guys. What I will say is that we're clearly seeing that there is a clear distinction. There are only two camps that exist in this world. You're either away, you're either on the path of wisdom or on the path of foolishness. There is no in between. You're either on the you're either you're either on the path of humility or on the path of pride. You're either on the path of teachability or the path of stubbornness. Do you guys see where I'm coming from? And those two paths also replicate the results. Wisdom leads to blessing, leads to prosperity, right? Leads to life. Foolishness leads to, leads to death, leads to poverty. Do you see what I'm saying? Leads to destruction, right? Literally, like the Bible says, the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. It's that simple. Now, one thought that I want to leave you guys with as I end this video for today, and then there's going to be day 15 coming out as well today, is that we need to realise, guys, that life is very simple and things in life are very simple. The reason why things become complicated is because when you step out of godlessness, when you step out of order, where do you find yourself? In disorder. And have you guys ever thought about how it's easy to hide amongst the, 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 the chaos, right? I was watching this... Um, it's easy, sorry, for things to be hidden amongst chaos, right? And that's why, like, you know, sometimes in movies and stuff, when somebody's trying to escape, what do they do? They wait for a crowded area. They wait for a grey area where you can't really tell who's what, where, when, and how. And that's the perfect place to escape. Because when things are out in the open, everything will be seen for what it truly is. And everything is a lot more simple. And that's the the key thought here, right? Every Life is really black and white. And things are really black and white. The grey area and the greying that's going on in society, that is what we should be concerned about. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe if you're feeling the vibe and you want to join the tribe. See you guys at day 15. Thank you guys for your patience for me not recording yesterday. Um, I almost didn't even feel like I hadn't even <laughs> had missed a day. I just felt like it went from like Friday to, to what is it? Sunday. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. God bless every single one of you. And I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye.